everybody wants a happy ending, right? But it doesn't always roll that way. Welcome to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. So let's talk about the future of the MCU. There have been so many off-screen upheavals in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the past 12 months. Two of their biggest stars left the franchise. They lost Spider-Man, then they got him back. James Gunn was fired and rehired, delaying Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which was supposed to kick off Phase 4 of the MCU. Then Black Widow, a movie that was already arriving four years too late, was delayed because of the coronavirus, and then everything was delayed because of the coronavirus, including the Disney Plus shows. Marvel Studios plans their movies and TV shows years in advance. So one little domino out of place can set everything back years. So what is the future of the MCU? Is there ever going to be another Avengers team? Well, if you look at the building blocks that they have in place, it's kind of obvious what they're building toward. Will you share it with us? And then we get this huge news about Jonathan Majors being cast in Ant-Man 3, most likely as Kang the Conqueror. Get on with it. So I'm going to explain Kang, what Marvel's planning, and reveal a little bit of an insider tip that might just confirm all of this. Yes, get over there! All right, so let's look at the projects on the horizon and the new heroes that are slated to appear. Now, there are a few replacement heroes for the ones we already know. Sam Wilson is the new Captain America. Jane Foster is the new Thor. She-Hulk replaces Hulk. And the Hawkeye series is going to be about Clint Barton training a new hero, Kate Bishop, to fill her shoes. And there's also new heroes like Miss Marvel, Shang-Chi, The Eternals, Blade, and Moon Knight. And there's also several heroes who will be getting sequels like Ant-Man, Captain Marvel, and Doctor Strange. While supporting characters like Wanda Maximoff and Loki are getting their own spinoff series on Disney+. So there's definitely enough heroes in there to form a new Avengers team, and they probably will. But I think that they're also building toward a second superhero team, the Young Avengers. In the comics, this team was formed by a program that the Vision wrote that was set to roll into motion in case the Avengers were ever destroyed. You know, like they've been destroyed in the movies. A hero called Iron Lad found this program and basically gathered together the team. More on Iron Lad in a second. Now we've already seen one member of this team, Cassie Lang, AKA Stature, who inherits her father Scott's ability to grow. Cassie was even aged up to a teenager in Endgame, basically setting her up to be one of the Young Avengers. Another team member is Kate Bishop, who, like I said before, is going to appear in the Hawkeye Disney Plus series. Now, here's where it gets a little weird. In the comics, Vision and Wanda have twin sons that she basically imagines into existence. And then they went away and she went crazy, and then later on they returned as superpowered teenagers. Their names are Billy Kaplan, aka Wiccan, and he has the powers of his mother, while his brother Thomas has speed powers, like his uncle Pietro. You didn't see that coming? Okay, so what does that have to do with the MCU? Well, as we explained in our WandaVision trailer breakdown, these are their twin sons. And it's apparent that she created a pocket reality that moves throughout the decades. So the boys could age very fast. There's even a rumor that Evan Peters, who's Quicksilver in the Fox X-Men universe, was cast in this show. So he could be playing Thomas, another version of Quicksilver. Wanda is also going to appear in Doctor Strange, The Multiverse of Madness. The events that you will see Wanda go through in the WandaVision epic series will be reflected and tied directly into Doctor Strange in The Multiverse of Madness. That movie will likely see Doctor Strange traveling to different realities and parallel Earths similar to the new timelines that the Avengers created in Endgame. And one of these other dimensions could even be the TV pocket reality that Wanda creates in WandaVision. And the animated What If series will also show stories from these divergent realities. But another dimension hopping character is rumored to appear in Doctor Strange 2, America Chavez. And she's a member of, you guessed it, the Young Avengers. I've also heard from some actor friends who've read for a part described as a character who is the son of two worlds. This sounds an awful lot like Hulkling, who in the comics is the shape-shifting son of Captain Marvel and a Skrull princess. Now this character could easily be the son of Annette Benning and a Skrull, or maybe even Brie Larson's long lost son. Oh, yeah. According to the Illuminati, Hulkling is being cast for WandaVision which is also going to introduce S.W.O.R.D., which is the space version of S.H.I.E.L.D. But even if that isn't true, we have Miss Marvel. She's a shapeshifter, like the Skrulls, who named herself after Carol Danvers' original name, Miss Marvel. And she was inspired to take that name by Captain Marvel, another Kree hero. So either way, we're gonna have Kree and Skrull attributes kind of mixed together in Miss Marvel. The leader of the Young Avengers is named Patriot. He's the grandson of Isaiah Bradley, an African-American soldier who, in the comics, 
received an earlier version of the Super Soldier Serum before Steve Rogers. And there's a rumor that Carl Lumbly is playing him in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Now, I don't think it's likely that in the MCU, he took the serum before Steve Rogers, but we know the government was trying to replicate the serum for years. So this Dr. Banner was trying to replicate the serum they used on me? A lot of people were. So maybe Isaiah received a less potent form of the serum years later. Like maybe he was a soldier who served in Vietnam. That would open up the door for his grandson, Elijah, to become the superhero Patriot. And then there's kid Loki. Yes, in the comics, Loki turns into a kid. And it's kind of complicated, but trust me, it happens. So could this also happen in the MCU? Sure. Marvel has said that the solo Loki series is about him traveling throughout time, causing mischief in different eras. Now, in that brief teaser for the Loki series, he's wearing a prison jumpsuit that reads TVA. There's been some speculation that this stands for the Time Variance Authority. They're like the time cops of the MCU. What the f Your time is all ripped up to hell! And as we've seen in Endgame, sometimes you pass through time, and sometimes time, well, it passes through you. It's baby. So the series could end with Loki being remade into a younger version of himself, similar to what happened to Scott Lang. Somebody peed my pants. And this would free up Tom Hiddleston to say goodbye to the character while allowing Loki to continue to make mischief in the MCU. Okay, so what about Iron Lad? Well, there's a couple possibilities for this character. Remember this gangly teenager at Tony Stark's funeral? That's Ty Simpkins, the actor who played Harley Keener in Iron Man 3. Admit it, you need me, we're connected. At the end of that movie, Tony leaves Harley with a lab full of gear, so it's possible that he creates his own Iron Man suit. But Iron Lad's origin in the comics is way more complicated. He's actually from the future and is the younger teenage self of the villain Kang, who, like I said, is now rumored to be played by Jonathan Majors in Ant-Man and the Wasp 3. And Kang is a longtime Avengers villain. He's from a utopian future, and he basically gets bored and decides to conquer the past with futuristic technology. And we did a whole video last year about why he's the most likely villain for the team to face next, especially after they tampered with time in Endgame. If you mess with time, it tends to mess back. Oh, see, you broke time and you thought you could just stick it back together with this? Now, it's important to note that Iron Lad is not evil in the comics. In fact, his main goal is to prevent himself from growing up and becoming evil. In the comics, he's a descendant of Reed Richards, leader of the Fantastic Four. But what if, in the movies, he's a descendant of Tony Stark? This could be why the MCU introduced Morgan Stark in the first place, to show that she's going to continue the family line. They even foreshadowed there's going to be another Iron Man in the family in her very first scene. So why would King slash Iron Lad be a descendant of Tony Stark instead of Reed Richards? Well, for one, Marvel didn't have the right to Reed Richards when they were forming their plans for this phase of movies. It would also make sense if one of Tony's descendants used time travel because he invented time travel. And Tony's entire arc was about preventing the world from being harmed by his weapons. So his descendant, Iron Lad, would have the same problem. Now he has to prevent himself from harming the present with weapons from the future. But what do you think? Are you excited for the Young Avengers to enter the MCU? What superhero team do you think they should focus on next? Let me know in the comments below. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.